existing solutions. Uh, it's a far more valuable uh, proposition all round. I'd like to hand you over to Jeff Newsbaum. The session will last for about 20 to 25 minutes and then he'll be taking questions. Feel free to chat down the bottom, uh, particularly for Yang, because you don't actually have access to the microphone. So if you have any questions, please just as you're going through, type them in and Jeff can go through them at the end. Uh, like I said, we're going to be recording these sessions and they will be available on the website uh, through Jay and his wonders in the next couple of days. And he'll let you know when that gets put up on the website as well. That's pretty useful if you have other people in your organisation who actually couldn't make it today or if you have new people coming onto your team and you don't actually have time to do the training for them, you can send them to our website and sit them down and listen to this webinar. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to the very, very knowledgeable Jeff Newsbaum. Right. Hello guys, thanks for joining us today. Um, this will be the first of a number of training sessions that we're planning for different features within RDMC and the SOE framework. Um, today's topic will be software deployment, um, software deployment being potentially one of the most useful features and certainly one that uh, most people are particularly interested in. Um, later on I will uh, unlock the microphone so we can have a, a discussion, but we'll start at the moment um, just by going through a quick demonstration. So first thing is what is software deployment and what do we use it for? Well, as the name suggests, software deployment is there to allow you to push software out to machines in the organisation. This can be used for a number of reasons. You may be deploying new applications, you may be deploying updates to existing applications. They could be patches, um, that file updates for an antivirus program, new icons, registry keys, pretty much anything that you want to change. Updates can be pushed out to either all of the machines in the organisation or to selected machines within the organisation. Um, in addition, you can use RDMC Software Licensing Manager to keep track of what you've actually pushed out, how many copies you've got out there so that you can make sure that you don't deploy too many copies of a commercial application and exceed your license count. So there's a number of different sections we need to look at for software deployment. First is how we add new software into the RDMC console, um, then how we select a group of machines and deploy the software. Within RDMC, we have a section called the uh, Site Application Containers. Site Application Containers are groups of packages. Um, again, they can be individual software applications, they can be a combination of applications plus updates plus settings files, things like that. Um, in addition, application containers can contain script items, things like instructions to reboot a client's machine um, or to pause and wait a certain period of time during the installation. So we'll start by looking at an existing application container. Um, all we need to do is right click on application container and enumerate and that will show us the applications that we currently have. So in this case you can see we have a test application and we have Autodesk. Um, now if we need to add a new application, RDMC is very flexible as to what it's able to deploy. Um, unlike most deployment solutions, you don't have to have your applications packaged in a specific way to allow RDMC to deploy them. The only real rule is that the applications must be able to install without the need for user interaction. As long as that's the case, you can use, um, the, you can use the standard installer that comes from the application provider if that's able to run silently. You can use a repackaged one in MSI format, it could be an executable, it could be a batch file. Um, in the case of RDMC, it doesn't mind as long as it has a single command that it can run to cause that software to install. So what we'll do first is we'll quickly look at how we add a new application into um, the RDMC software deployment. Um, for this part of the demo, we will assume that you've already got the source for your application and that that's been copied into your distribution point. This is, a, this is something that we'll cover in more depth in another topic, but also in the Getting Started Guide, you will find information on how to do that. So what we're going to do now is add in a package for Adobe Acrobat Reader. So we right click anywhere in the empty area. We click on add software item. We will now put in a description. So this will be Adobe Acrobat Reader. Okay. Click the three buttons so that we can browse and this will take us to our distribution point. We'll look at scripted applications, core viewers, Adobe Reader. 
Okay, so this MSI is in fact the original MSI that comes from Adobe. In the case of the majority of packages that have been deployed um, in MSI, they will run silently with no need for you to change anything. So they're always the easiest to add in. Um, so in the case of MSI, we don't need to specify any options. Simply double click um, and hit apply. Then we'll just wait for that to save, close. That's it. Now you can see that we've already got the new application um, in place in the container. Um, I mentioned also that there are special items that you can add, such as reboots and pauses. Those are accessed in the same way. So again, if we right click and we do an add software item, we can come in here and specify either close the installer. This would normally be done if the application package that you're installing is expected to reboot the machine itself. So this tells RDMC to close down the RDMC client and wait for the package to reboot the machine. After the reboot, RDMC will come back in um, and take over the deployment process from there. The second option is to restart the computer. In other words, this is when you want to reboot, but the application package will not be performing the reboot itself. So in this particular case, RDMC will reboot the machine for you and then again continue the deployment afterwards. Um, the next option is pause, um, and we can specify a number of seconds to wait. This is something you would typically use if you've got an application package where the installer does not um, close down normally. With most installation packages, when you start an installation, that installer will continue to run until the installation process is finished. In the case of some applications, however, the installer will actually run a secondary program and the installer will close early. If that happens, RDMC has no way of knowing whether or not the, the installation is finished. In that particular case, you would put a pause, which gives, which gives sufficient time for the application installer to complete on its own, and RDMC can continue from there on. The last option for a special container item is to add a predefined container. This is useful if you've already set up a container with a group of applications, and let's say you could have an AutoCAD um, container which installs AutoCAD, it installs one of the AutoCAD updates, it installs several of the add-ons and things like that, then you can simply add the entire group in one hit simply by ticking that and selecting the container that you want. Um, We'll skip over these bits though primarily, so, uh, for today's we're interested just in how we deploy a single application. So now that we've added our application to the list, um, we'll do a right click and save the application container just to make sure that everything that we put in um, is saved and ready to go. The green light that shows here indicates that it has located the, um, that it's located the application package where we specified it. Um, if you get a red light, that indicates that you've given it the path to an installer which does not appear to exist. Um, so now that we've got our application container, we'll look at how we can go about deploying this. There are two different ways that you can deploy an application um, once it's in um, an application container. You can either select an existing group of machines that you've already defined, in other words a complete device collection, or you can select individual machines from one or more collections um, and deploy to those. So we'll start by going through the easy route. We'll take a look at how we can deploy to an entire collection of devices. The quickest and easiest way to do that is to run the deploy software Quick Start Wizard. This will take you step by step through the stages you need in order to deploy your application. So first off, we click Next. We select our collection. So this will be the collection of machines that has been defined within RDMC. And this is assuming that you want to deploy the application to all of the machines in that group. So in this case, for example, I will pick my test laptops group. Okay, next we need to specify what application we're going to, what application or applications we're going to install. The drop-down list here um, contains a list of all of our um, uh, all of our defined device, sorry, software collections. You can choose the collection that you want, so in this case it was a test collection that we were working with. Hit the load button and the contents of the collection will appear. Now the function for the two lists here is simple. The top list allows you to view and access your existing software collections. The bottom part of the view allows you to create an installation script. So you can choose several different items to install from different collections if you like and build up your installation script prior to running the installer. So in this particular case, we're going to install Adobe Acrobat Reader. We will add checked items here, and that now appears on the list. Um, and then we simply go Next. Now, this is the most important selection that you will make when, you, when you're going to do a software deployment. This indicates how the application is going to appear 